In this project, we want users to see a card with some prompt text for whatever they want to learn, such as, what is the capital city of Scotland? When they tap it, we'll reveal the answer, which in this case is of course Edinburgh. A sensible place to start for most projects is to define the data model we want to work with. What does one card of information look like? If you wanted to take this app further, you could store some interesting statistics such as number of times shown and number of times correct. But here we're only going to store a string for the prompt and a string for the answer. To make our lives easier, we're also going to add an example card as a static property. So we have some test data for previewing and prototyping. So create a new Swift file called card.swift and give it this code. Struct card. Let prompt string var answer string. Static var example is a card. And we'll say card prompt who played the 13th Doctor in Doctor Who? The answer being Jodie Whittaker. In terms of showing that in a Swift UI view, we need something slightly more complicated. Yes, there will be two text labels shown one above the other, but you also have to show a white card behind them to bring our UI to life. Then add just a touch of padding to the text so it doesn't quite go to the edge of the card behind it. In Swift UI terms, this means a VStack for the two labels inside a Z stack with a white rounded rectangle. I don't know if you've used flashcards to learn before, but they have a very particular shape that makes them wider than they are high. This makes sense if you think about it. You're usually only writing two or three lines of text, so it's more natural to write long ways than short ways. All our apps so far haven't really cared about device orientation, but we're going to make this one work only in landscape. This gives us more room to draw our cards, and it will also work better once we introduce gestures later on. To force landscape mode, look at the top of Xcode's Project Navigator. You'll see Flashzilla appears twice there, once with a blue icon and once with a yellow icon. The yellow icon is a group that holds our code, but the blue icon is our project and contains lots of settings for our app. Inside there, you'll get to meet one of the worst parts of Xcode's UI. Because Xcode actually divides our project into two more things, also called Flashzilla. One is a project, and one is a target inside the project. Targets are ways of putting together different kinds of code into the same project. We could have an iOS target, a watchOS target, and a tvOS target all inside the same project, for example. The problem is that Xcode's UI for selecting the target is quite baffling for newcomers. How you do it depends on your Xcode configuration. If you see Flashzilla with a small up and down arrow next to it, you need to show the project and targets list. The button directly to its left shows a square that's left edge shaded in. Please click that button and follow the next step. If you see project and Flashzilla, then target and Flashzilla, it means your project and targets list is visible. You should select the Flashzilla under target. If you get it right, you'll see lots of tabs appear near the top of Xcode. General, signing capabilities, resource tags, and so on. I'd like you to select General, then look down to the device orientation settings. The default values for that are to check Portrait, Landscape Left, and Landscape Right. But I'd like you to uncheck Portrait so we only support the two landscape orientations. With that done, we can take our first pass at a view to represent one card in our app. So, create a new Swift UI view called card view and give it this code. Let card, card, Z stack, rounded rectangle, corner radius 25, style dot continuous, and a fill of color dot white. After that, we'll put a V stack, a text for the card's prompt, and a large title font, with a black foreground color. And below that, the card's answer, and a title font, and a gray foreground color. We'll add a padding of 20, and use multi-line text alignment of center to center those two pieces of text. Around the whole Z stack, we'll do a frame of width 450, height of 250. Now that width of 450 is no accident. The smallest iPhones have a landscape width of 480 points, so this means our card will be fully visible on all devices. That'll break the card view preview struct, because it requires a card parameter to be passed in. But we already added a static example directly to the card struct for this very purpose. 
So, update the card view preview struct to this. Card, card.example. If you take a look at the preview, you should see our example card showing. But you can't see it's actually a card. It has a white background, and so it doesn't stand out against the default background of our view. This will become doubly problematic when we have a stack of cards to work through, because they'll all have white backgrounds and kind of blend into each other. There's a simple fix for this. We can add a shadow effect to the rounded rectangle, so we get a gentle depth effect. This will help us right now by making our white cards stand out from the white background. But when we start adding more cards, it'll look even better because the shadows will add up. So add this modifier below the fill color.white. Dot shadow, radius 10. Now right now you can see both the prompt and the answer at the same time, but obviously that isn't going to help anyone learn. So to finish this step, we're going to hide the answer labeled by default and toggle its visibility whenever the card is tapped. So start by adding this new at state property to card view. At state, private var is showing answer equals false. Now wrap the answer view in a condition for that boolean, like this. If showing answer. That simple change means it'll only show the answer when is showing answer is true. The final step is to add an on tap gesture modifier to the Z stack by putting this code after the frame modifier. Dot on tap gesture self dot is showing answer dot toggle. And that's our card view done for the time being. So if you want to see it in action, go back to content view dot swift and replace its body property with this card view card card.example. When you're in the project, you'll see the app jumps into landscape mode automatically, and our default card appears. A good start.